What's up everybody, Josh here again, and today we have an Icarus Week 45 update. This week, they've added multiple changes to mounts, some bug fixes, and they added an entire husbandry tree to our talents. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 45, mounts number two. Icarus Week 45 update, new husbandry tree and fixes for mounts. A new husbandry tree fixes and balances for mounts and upcoming big features included this week. Week 45's update focuses on new features and fixes for our mount system that we introduced in week 42. The new husbandry tree will allow you to invest in your mounts prowess in either taming, raising, or riding. We've also included a bunch of rebalances, tweaks, and improvements to the system, addressing interaction issues with beds and troughs and overall general behavior. We've also included information on the three upcoming features and systems, reading to our future of mounts, open world mode, and narrative mission chains. So this week they added the husbandry tree. A new husbandry tree provides players with a way to become an expert in the mount system, allowing to either specialize into being a tamer, raiser, or rider to support a team, or have a more jack-of-all-trades approach. The left side of the tree focuses on taming phase of the cycle, with talents focused on temperature tolerance, taming speed, and providing juveniles immunity from tagging predators. The middle of the tree provides talents focused on raising your mounts and providing them baseline improvements. Talents in this branch focusing on gathering, food and water consumption, mount health, and amount predators will perceive them as a threat. The right side of the tree provides talents that are centered and utilizing your mount for riding or as a pack animal. These feature stamina bonuses, reduce player oxygen, food, water requirements, and carry weight and movement speed. They had some key mount fixes and new mechanics. They've gathered a large amount of feedback on our mounts since launch and this week they're incorporating some fixes balances and addressing some issues and areas for improvement they increased the default carry weight capacity of the buffalo and added extra capacity to the pack harness you can now manually feed and water mounts from your quick bar and feed them actually gives them a burst of health regeneration as well they've improved mount and juvenile ability to navigate towards troughs and beds yay mounts no longer starve to death when a distance from the player Thank God, this was a serious issue. Mounts of juveniles now take item nutrition value into account when eating, meaning that they will consume lower quantities of high nutrition items such as watermelon, but will consume higher quantities of low nutrition items such as berries. So it actually matters with what you feed them now. If you feed them a higher item such as a watermelon or maybe a corn, they won't eat as, as much as say berries. So if it gives more nutrition when you eat it or food, then it's consumed less now with mounts in your troughs. Some future mount features. They state how their first iteration of the mounts has been a success. They have a lot of plans for the new system to come in the future and they want to talk about them. The husband tree tree released today is one of those features. They've also been experimenting with mounts being able to pull different items and machines across different terrains that offer various uses along with different types of saddles and attachments. They're also looking into other animals that should be raised into mounts. And mention how the modding community quickly incorporated bears as available mounts in a download they don't have plans of making bears an actual available mount boo but they enjoyed watching the gameplay nonetheless the future of three distinct game modes so they introduced their plans last week of the open world mode the next large feature would be to introduce into the game and they wanted to clearly define three different ways to play icarus open world mode which provides a traditional survival experience where you can access the entire map and choose the drop zones in a persistent, dangerous environment with respawning world bosses, weather impacts, and no experience reduction. We also have Outposts, which will provide you with a sandbox experience, allowing you to create and build in a controlled environment where your creativity and ambition are able to run wild. This is designed to be self-contained experience, giving you the space and innovation that you need without consequence. We also have the missions, of course, with the instance missions, which are the bread and butter of Icarus. With self-contained stories and missions, they have absolutely no plans to stop developing or evolving them. And they're going to continue working on all those improvements and updates for those game modes in the future. And in the long run, they are aiming to include the ability to trigger missions from your open world mode bases, but it will not be available in the first pass. Releasing that version is the first step of their journey towards this goal. And the narrative chain missions. We have been working on a few narrative chain missions which will 
platform, a chain to incorporate a new story from the beginning to the end with new characters and objectives. This allows us to form a more campaign feel around a central story that spans multiple drops, and we will hope they will immerse our players deeper into the Icarus lore. The missions should start providing more detail and insight into various factions, creatures, and histories and stories that surround the failed terraforming project and give players more engagement with the different elements of the universe. And before we go over to change log, we're going to kind of show you a little bit about the husbandry tree and let you know what options are available. So to get to the husbandry tree, what you're going to do is go to habitation underneath your talents and all the way on the right hand side, you'll see husbandry. It's been added in with the repairing tools and building trees. Here you'll find several options to go into if you wanted to spend your talents into them. We'll care for it. We'll give you negative 40%. Taming equipment crafting cost. We're back in the saddle. We'll give you negative 40% saddle crafting cost. You have grazing for the herd plus 10% yield for foraging. Energetic encouragement plus 10% tame creature stamina regen and juvenile creature sleep requirement negative 20% at two points. Relax rider, which gives you negative oxygen, food, and water consumption. Adaptive training, which gives negative minimum temperature requirement and plus 10% juvenile creature maximum temperature requirement. Hardy diet, which gives tame creatures maximum health and health regeneration. Some negative perceived threat with act natural. Long haul will give you at three points plus 10% tame creature weight capacity. Nurturing presence will give you nearby juveniles tame faster. Beast endurance will give you plus 10% tame creature maximum stamina at two points. Like the wind will give you plus 5% tame creature movement speed. Still one with nature will give you juvenile creatures do not pose any threat to predators. You also have Arctic training, which tames faster in cold environments. Same thing for desert and in your element, which increases exposure resistant while riding up to 10% exposure resistant while mounted at two points. So this week we got the change log. Looks like they kind of messed that up a little bit, but in the new content section this week, all the new stuff for the husband tree talent set. They do mention that the basic wood hedgehog will now damage players. Hedgehogs deal 50% damage to players. They increase the buffalo mount health regeneration, and you'll now be kicked out of the mount inventory screen if the distance between you and the mount becomes too far. Creatures mounted by the local player now play audio when they take fall damage. You're now prompted with a dialogue to set the name when first claiming a tame mount. They added the ability to feed the animals from your inventory. And of course, if it feeds you a lot, it'll feed them a lot. And in the fix section this week, they did several fixes and looks like tried to do some, some performance improvements. They also added a new option to the graphics menu, to limit pull size to the VRAM, which may help alleviate blurry textures on GPUs with not enough memory. Note this is enabled by default and should only be disabled if you're having texture issues. Disabling may issue crashes. As you can see, limit pull size to VRAM is on. It says disabling this on low end GPUs will not have enough memory may alleviate blurry textures. Now they did add the sandworm boss to all Olympus exploration missions, minimum one, maximum four. Styx has different biomes from Olympus, so max acolytes to atmosphere rather than biomes. This means that players correctly attain progress towards biome acolytes on Styx, Scorched Traveler, and Frozen Traveler. They fixed a bug where mounts and juveniles still wouldn't attempt to move to beds or water troughs if they were off the nav mesh. And feeding a mount will now apply a moderate amount of health regen with the duration changed based on the food's nutrition. Mounts can now be affected by a warm and cozy buff. This is in this section, but I'm going to read it out loud. It says adding in a base AI setup for the rock dog, including all and um, montages and placeholder stat values still needs lava state hookup and lava based attacks to be completed. I think this might have meant to be in a different section. So they increased the buffalo mount carry weight limit to 300 kilograms. Pack harness adds an additional 300 kilograms carry weight capacity. And they fixed the bug where mounts would start drowning if they stood in water for too long. In the future content this week, talk a little bit more about brick biddables and their tier assets added to the blueprints. Adding P bird attack and death audio and F mod events. Looks like they're adding some tags for the sledgehammer for harvesting and breaking nodes and whatnot. They're working on the ice borer a little bit more. Looks like it had some foliage set up for shelf mushrooms. Mention of an S bird attack 
vocalizations and events. Some more S bird flinch and death sounds and events. What's an S bird? S bird dip jaw and nip vocalizations and event. Added bulbous flax. Mentioned in flax again. S bird aggro vocals. I wonder what S birds are going to be. And that's all I really see for this week on the update and change log. What do you think about the new talent tree? Comment in the comments down below. For those of you who follow our streams, it looks like we may not be doing Sundays for a while. We're still going to be doing Friday and Saturday streams at 9 o'clock p.m., so look forward to those. And guys, that's it for this week. Don't forget, if you enjoy what you see, to like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Subscribing helps support us. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. Peace.